How are things? It's James from Major Men's uh, We're on with a uh, Sligo legend, Conan O'Donnell. Conan, do you want to tell us where you are now at the moment? I'm uh, in Dunedin, in New Zealand, the, the south the south coast of New Zealand. So it's a bit coast, like a uh, mixture of Sligo and Galway. So you're happy out where you spent most of your time between the two places? Oh, geez, it feels like I'm just at home, boy. <laughs> so tell us, what's the story with the coronavirus over there at the moment? I was uh, locked down. Uh, yeah. So we went into lockdown maybe about two weeks early before Ireland. So there's actually a lot less cases here and uh, just the only place in goes the supermarket. So there's no takeaway coffees from Kate's like everyone back home is having. So I, I to wish we were having that. I'm, I'm on instant coffee the whole time. So <laughs> and, uh, Jealous of all the lads and we snatched up their, uh, their coffees. <laughs> is everyone taken seriously over there? Like, is, is there much government warnings about it? Yeah, so the government's on the news every day talking about it talking about the new cases and how people are abiding by it. And then obviously the few people that don't stick to the rules are going to court for like little things like driving without a reason. So, so that's all on the news every day. Yeah. Well, that's what someone told me. I don't know how true it is. And uh, when does it look to be over? Is there any word of it being over yet? or playing it um, At the moment, it's over in two weeks. But like I'll probably go down to level three and level two first. And then... Then we'll be probably let go out, but I said I'll have the borders closed for another while. So yeah, I don't think, out, really. I'm not sure what the story of the border control is at the moment, but I don't think many people are coming in and out. Yeah, and come here, is there is there any talk on the remainder of the season, the rugby season? Uh, well, we're getting like zooms every week, kind of giving us the message. So I don't really know myself what's going on. So it could either be, um, yeah, they don't reach, really, <laughs> they haven't really told us what's happening. So. Yeah, so you're kind of in the dark as everyone else is. Yeah, just kind of just have to train, keep going and see what happens. Hopefully yeah. something comes up and I'll be fit and able when it comes around if it does. So. Hopefully. Fitter than you are. And is it tough um, Is it tough kind of keeping yourself motivated to train when you're doing isolation, like you're training at home? Uh, yeah, it can be. Like, kind of, it's harder to get up at the same time every morning or go to bed early like you usually do when you're kind of in a routine. But I suppose yeah. kind of, there's not much to do, so you're kind of like training's the thing to kind of keep you going. So you're kind of training out of boredom rather than motivation. So it's actually yeah. um, boredom is the biggest motivation at the moment. So can't really complain. Just getting the work done and uh, relaxing when I need to, doing my recovery and all that, all that boring stuff. <laughs> boring stuff. And uh, what else are you do to keep yourself entertained? Um, well, for the first week, I. Uh, we're doing a bit of Lego. I'll take off the virtual background there. <laughs> oh yeah, invest a lot of time into the Millennium Falcon. Doing a bit of Lego, so uh, <laughs> that, took me, <laughs> that took me a few days to do. So I, I don't really know what to do with myself anymore. Watching a lot of Simpsons, playing a bit of playing a bit of PS4, a bit of Football Manager. Was, I uh, say you were like a Robert child Jesus. at Christmas getting that. <laughs> oh, couldn't have come at a better time, boy. <laughs> and there's another uh, little piece as well. We've got two of them. <laughs> <laughs> Chewbacca and all. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, if you're good now, your mum might send you out some more Lego. <laughs> <laughs> That's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't expecting that, but <laughs> No, I wasn't expecting Lego at all. I thought maybe a PlayStation. <laughs> Yeah, I know Stephen well, Kearns just bought a PlayStation, so he's keeping himself entertained with that. <laughs> yeah, fair. He's uh, asked me to play Fortnite every night, but... Is he? Uh, That'll be like the boy. <laughs> uh, Greer, are you meeting up with any, like, Saigo lads over there? I know Connor Cairns has been out there for the last while. Have you seen him much? Um, so he's in Queenstown, which is about three hours away from here. Oh, so nice. um, when my the Mitre 10 season finished, I actually went over to visit him for a weekend. And uh, he um, he showed me the Irish pub that he he loves so much. So he's his name's on the wall for uh, drinking hundred pints of Guinness. So, um, <laughs> I mean, let's unfortunately, I can't it. say. I, unfortunately, I can't say my name's on the wall after my week there. But uh, <laughs> uh, it's a it's a great old spot, and we had a great laugh when I was down to him. So, oh yeah, uh, he's looking like a real Islander now with the hair growing out as well, isn't he? And the, and the mustache. And the mustache is the, well. the kiwi mustache. I tried growing myself, but it didn't. Uh, <laughs> didn't grow too, as fast as I wanted to, so I had to get rid of it. The, the, uh, the Jackie challenge, as I call it. Shorty Clarkins do a visit if he's over that side of the world. 
Yeah, so he's out of quarantine now, so hopefully he'll come over and visit me. Bye, yeah, we'll have a little party of him getting out okay. I think you're probably back into quarantine now as soon as he goes back over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Greer, just um, how, did you, how did you get into uh, get into rugby when you were from a really strong GA background? All your brothers really played Gaelic, wouldn't they? Mainly. Yeah, so um, I suppose I got rugby because I was, wasn't great at Gaelic and I could never get on the field. I spent more time on the bench than I did in the field. So I suppose rugby's the only thing I had a well, that's not really true, though. So I kind of just put my Do you not remember back to second year, you uh, you scored 1-2 in a, in a second year B championship game for Summerhill? Oh, no, it was a Connacht, Connacht A League. I thought it was a B championship. 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 <laughs> and uh, who put the ball in the Jarlitz net, as uh, Connor Sweeney often asked me. So, <laughs> 2 uh, one that day, boy. Probably my, my proudest GA memory to date. That was kind of the highlight for it. Was that like your biggest sporting achievement overall? I think so. Like I've, I've hung up the GA boots ever since that day, and I'm, I've, uh, I have the the article, the article framed on the wall back home in Sligo. <laughs> it's in the room, anyways, isn't it? Uh, you've obviously you've been over all, all over the world. So how many countries did you play rugby in in the last few years? Oh jeez, I don't know. <laughs> I've um, in the last year with rugby, I've been to Boston. Japan, Italy, uh, Cape Town in South Africa, Buenos Aires, I was there twice, uh, New Zealand, Australia, England, Wales, I think, yeah. That's very so, impressive, like, that's... Been around the block in the last few months. That's, yeah. A <laughs> lot, lot of air points. Oh, what, would you, what would you say your favourite country was, altogether? Probably Japan. The place is unbelievable, the, the people were where I'm from. Um, the fans were very fanatical there as well, and... It was just, it was just a different place altogether. Like, uh, I thought it'd be, um, it'd be a lot different, but like, I thought it was way better than I expected. And I really was enjoyed it. it. It's probably one of the best experiences I've had rugby wise and and life wise as well. Just awesome. I said the World Cup was up great there. I say I've heard stories. It was very good. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I heard a few. Um, obviously, there's a big difference between like northern and seven, uh, southern hemisphere style of rugby. Like, would you say that the Southern Hemisphere style would suit you better? You were, you were abnormally fast for a forward, especially a front row. Oh, sure, sure. I'm, I'm burning wingers down here, boy. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> like, it's a lot quicker, but um, I suppose it's quite similar to Northern Hemisphere rugby. Like, a lot of people say it's different, but, like, it's kind of people just throw the ball a bit around more. That's why it's a bit quicker and, like, it's faster ball. So you kind of have to be a tiny bit fitter, but not a whole pile fitter. And then well, it's, just, it's a lot more so. enjoyable, I suppose. Is it? It wouldn't be rocking too much. It'd be more focused on offload, would they? Yeah, just down and give, pop it up. So, that's so like, more. Like myself, you, myself and James Hampson used to do back in the day. Throwing <laughs> up. Trying to take off from the wing into the butter front row. Uh, do you still, um, would you still torment all your coaches to play wing for the last 10 minutes, or is that a thing in the past? Oh, that was a, that was a one stop thing. Did you try to leave that at under 16s. <laughs> <laughs> I left that memory behind me. Poor John Davy shot down my dreams, so I haven't um haven't tried to ask a coach since. <laughs> I remember the big goose step you tried to do down in Cork. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. You bounced the winger about three meters, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> um. Obviously, playing with uh, Sonny Bill must be one of the biggest highlights. Like I know for myself, looking back, when I was playing rugby, he was someone you'd always watch, thinking he was just unreal. Now, I know it was from a short space of time, but did you learn much from him, like, even for that one game? Um, not really. I didn't really chat to him much for rugby-wise. kind of just good to have him in the dressing room, kind of his leadership and his professionalism was probably the biggest thing I could learn from him. Really? But like, he's in a different position to me, so there's not a, not a whole lot I can learn. From them in that regard, and I, I wouldn't be throwing off loads like him anyways. So, if I could, I could have picked them up, I would have, but I didn't, unfortunately. So, sure, remember that try he scored was 2011 World Cup. He ran the pitch with the ball in his hand, just hold. <laughs> yeah, freaking nature. I'd say he was just unreal, though, was he? Watching him play. Yeah, it was great to play with him and great to be able to watch him play and make line breaks and throw these massive offloads. You probably stop and think for a second, like, in awe with them, but sure, look. Oh, sure, the length of his That's what happens, boy. <laughs> um, 
Uh, you're currently, you're, you played with the Highlanders. You're yeah, so I was with them. I'm actually out of contract now since this um, coronavirus has started. But I'm not sure what's happening. I'm back with um, counties in July. So um, we'll see what happens there. But um, I don't know if the Highlanders will be playing now in the next few months. It all depends on kind of government policies and all that stuff. So yeah, I uh, well, don't really know what's happening there. So I can't really, can't really give you a, a, an answer to my question. But. <laughs> and did you play? You played with Aaron Smith, anyways, did you? Yeah. So I played with him and trained away with him. So he's actually lived down the road from us, I think. Um, he? Yeah, he just moved down there. He's a good lad. Great fun. Uh, works really hard and just great to have him with the same team as us. No, I'd say he's a good leader. In fairness to him, he was fantastic for the All Blacks for years. Yeah, sure. He's he's a legend of the game already. So and one of the most highest captain the team already too. So. Just to compare the two of them, like um, between Aaron Smith and Stephen Cairns, who would you be most scared of when you're in the rock? Oh, geez, probably Stephen Cairns. The man um, <laughs> has a strong dose of uh, small man syndrome, so you just don't want to get in his way. When, <laughs> you don't want to get in his way when he's angry. I heard a few stories that he's been scaring big uh, forwards for Connor two years. Yeah, I've been, uh, I've been on the receiving end of his boot a few times. So. <laughs> I think it was John Davy who, who gave him permission to start kicking forwards up the hole. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> boss him around. <laughs> um, a lot, more, a lot more kind of professional teams in in like New Zealand, Australia, all them kind of places. So there'll be more chance of game time. Um, a big competition for kind of your place, your kind of position all over Ireland and England, wouldn't there? Yeah, so there's massive like emphasis on props in Ireland and England. And um, I suppose I just didn't get enough, as much game time as I wanted when I was back in Ireland. But um, I suppose the move down here has probably paid off as dividends for me as I've played a lot more minutes uh, since I moved down as I would have as if I stayed in Galway. So yeah. I think uh, it was a risk. It was a worth, risk worth taking. Yeah, definitely was. Probably it suits your game really more and you learn a lot more different kind of styles as well. Yeah, so it's good to kind of get an exposure to this type of rugby and it'll only stand to me in the future and it's even um, improved me a lot as a player and playing at this intensity can only, can only benefit me but <laughs> You'll thrive down there. Um, oh yeah, hopefully. Obviously one of your biggest probably sporting achievements must be like playing for the Ireland under 20s for the two years. Yeah, so that was fun. So I went to um, one World Cup in Italy and played in the Six Nations but I missed my World Cup but um it was great to be able to represent your country and just kind of play ball and uh, go to all these countries abroad and um, meet new lads in the team, make good friends in the team as well as playing there. Um, and it was just a really good good standard and nice to nice to play for Ireland, I suppose, even if it's only yeah. in the 20s. But. Still a big achievement in itself. Um, set was great playing, with, playing alongside Stephen as well, like somebody you've been playing with for, for years before that. Yeah, it was great to play with Stephen and Crouchy, so the three of us kind of all grew up together, all, all Summer Hill men as well. So, all you know, Summer Hill men, that's a good shape. It's probably rarely itself. get one lad from Sligo, let alone three. So, it's pretty, pretty special team we had there. So, yeah, just showed, especially uh, for a school good, rugby good for Summer Hill. Sorry? Especially for schools rugby for Summer Hill is not a traditional rugby school. Yeah, sure. Sure, we all play Gaelic, like so. <laughs> um, you wouldn't get that many numbers up playing rugby at all. So, we didn't have a team in fifth year. So, uh -huh. it's it was just kind of mad how it all worked out, really, isn't it? Yeah, it's good. It's um, good. It shows the work the club's doing as well. So, yeah, the club's doing great work now. There's great facilities down there, like that. That first pitch has been, and then they have the Astro Turf as well, which is I've gone there the Astro 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 stuff a few times. It's great, great little thing to have there. Yeah, very good. Very to the training we used to do on the on that little bog. the bog. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the you've be, been coming in filthy. Oh, I remember mum used to bring that. Yeah, to the showers, freezing, yeah. <laughs> um, I was just, uh, I was hoping you'd uh, clear this up for us. I heard this uh, story before. Um, your um, first cap for Ireland, you um, you didn't actually get put on by the manager. You kind of just subbed yourself on, didn't you? Um, no, it wasn't. Uh, it was like maybe my third cap for Connor. Um, there was like a mix-up with the kind of... Uh, the the linesman kind of with the substitution cards, but anyways, I like ran onto the pitch, told my fellas to get off with twenty minutes to go, and just played away. And then when I came into the dressing room afterwards, people were like, "Oh, the coach is giving out to you. The coach is giving out to you." And I was like, 
all right. I went up and then then uh, the kit man came up and like, you summed yourself on, you bollocks. <laughs> so then we had a meeting on the Monday, kind of giving out about people summing themselves on, and you're not allowed to do that. So uh, it, was a, it was certainly a lesson I learned early on. <laughs> yeah, you're, not, you're just not really supposed to do that. <laughs> Put me on, coach. <laughs> just, just, just a bit eager. <laughs> I'd say you learned a lesson there, then. Um, what would you say your biggest sport and achievement has been to date? Uh, well, we already talked about the um, two-one in the Connacht A League final second years, but um, on <laughs> rugby, we'll go with rugby. All oh, right, sorry. <laughs> Be more specific. Yes, um, Probably, uh, probably my Irish schools debut because like, I suppose I wasn't really expecting to get on the team and I kind of worked hard to get there. So once I got on, it was probably just a big thing and it's probably kind of put me in the right direction. So that's probably the biggest thing of, I look at my biggest achievement kind of because that's what kind of put me to where I am, just kind of brought me into the right step and stone and right patterns. That way. Yeah, it was very rewarding really. Yeah. And uh, what about the under 15 uh, league for Sligo? Sure, that was our first win, wasn't it? Against Corinthians <laughs> after losing three finals in a row to them. We finally won. I said that and was up we there. Had, really. uh, we had James Hampson running down the wing, tensing his legs as he used to do. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I can't say I stopped doing that either. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I usually go in the front row for the team photos. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so you've moved a lot now in the last in the last uh, year or so. But like, is it off moving from city to city? It can be. Like, I unpacked my suitcase there for the first time since Christmas about a week ago. So I've been kind of, I say I've had about, geez, like seven or eight new houses, homes since I've since I left uh, Galway in March, and I've been living in and out of hotels and different housemates. Everything. It's kind of it's fun though. It's a kind of like you never know where you're gonna go next. So. I really enjoyed it, but um, yeah, hopefully I can get something more stable soon. We'll see. And just kind of going back to your inter Ireland days, are you uh, still falling in love with a different guy from every city, or is that just... Yeah, so I've lived in three cities in New Zealand now, and I think I've met the love of my life in every single one of them. To have you? Yeah. <laughs> just lost my heart in, in Auckland, so I have. And is it, is it true about the Islander girlfriends you recently got? I don't know where that source has come from. <laughs> it's um, a reliable source, so go on. <laughs> unreliable source. <laughs> so are, are any of these guys going to come down and see you? Um, I don't know. I'm not focusing on women at the moment, sure. It's not the time with the pandemic at the moment, so I, I haven't been thinking about that at all. <laughs> see what happens. Exactly. <laughs> we won't rush into anything. No, don't rush into it. Um, come here. Obviously, you played you played Gaelic a lot longer um, than you did for rugby. Was it uh, was it a tough decision to kind of give up on the Gaelic and hurling and concentrate on rugby? Um, not really. <laughs> I was pretty shy to both of them, so I uh, <laughs> I um, got an offer to do the Connacht Sub Academy for the summer, where I'd be there five days a week. So I literally just said, "Look, here to the coaches up in St Mary's that I'll be doing this for the." The summer, so I won't be able to commit. And they're like, "Yeah, that's grand, fair enough." You kind of you were the type of person for um, hurling. You just kind of catch and kick the ball. You never really, you never really use the hurl. I don't think you could. Do you know how to? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so I wasn't. Um, I wasn't much good at hurling. So I used to catch the ball, turn and kick it, and um, no one was able to block me because they were always waiting for me to use the hurl. But uh, <laughs> probably, probably smart decision looking back now. But if I do that at senior level, someone probably snap my leg with the, the hurl. <laughs> so you'd break the hurl more with your leg than it would? <laughs> no. I don't think anyone would last the hurl on the shin. You never know. There might be a shock retiring for championship if it ever gets up and running again. Yeah, so if this thing all ends soon, I might uh, come home for, for the summer and uh, play a few games, play a bit of ball. I'd say they'd love to have you back. Oh, hopefully. Uh, been, uh, there's, been, there's been talks about coming home already, so. <laughs> For championship. We've been big money. Um, yeah. <laughs> do, you 
Yeah, uh, what what are you doing now for work over there since you're out of contract? Were you a landscaper well, uh, or something like that? So I was out of contract for a week and I was doing um, landscaping to just get by. Um, whatever your man did me, got me doing a bit of con- concrete and I'd never been doing a bit of concrete in my life before. So I was, um, your man just kept giving out to me, giving out your thing to me because I didn't know what I was at. And uh, he was like telling me to hurry up because the concrete was about to dry and I didn't have a scoop is what I was doing. He probably couldn't get a, couldn't have got a worse worker in New Zealand that night. He just, I couldn't imagine you labouring at all. Like, <laughs> ah, I was good at the just wheeling the barrow down the end of the thing, but I just didn't know what the the tools at all were for the concrete. And your man probably thought I he got the idea that I must have done this work before, and I didn't have a clue what I was at. So. <laughs> just a big man from Ireland. There was a there was a lot of shouting in my direction. <laughs> um. How how would you stay in touch with everyone at home? Like, would you would you be on to your parents every few days or? Yeah, so I just ring them on WhatsApp, doing our FaceTime video call on WhatsApp every few days, and then now with the Zoom thing, everyone's kind of kicked off. So it's good to catch up with a group of lads and um have a cup of tea in the morning when everyone else is having beers at night here. But because it's basically your your night time is my morning, so. Yeah, it'd be difficult enough to keep uh, keep in contact, so you'd have to be getting up early. Yeah, exactly. Um, kind of have to get up about eight or nine. Everyone be all set for bed, but it's yeah, you, you make time to get the phone calls in. Yeah, you make it work, anyways. Um, you you'd be very you'd be very close with your mother going on. Uh, are you are you struggling big time? <laughs> I am. I'm ringing her every night. <laughs> Texting every day, so. Getting by okay. Like, can you do your own washing now? I've learned to do my own washing the last few weeks, so I'm kind of, <laughs> it's kind of moving away. It's probably yeah, bettered me as a person. I mature more every day, so. <laughs> You're not using the dry cleaners anymore? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the option to come home every weekend anyway, so. <laughs> With a big bag of washing. <laughs> Um, how often would you, how often do you get back to Ireland? You, you wouldn't you'd be back once a year, would you? Uh, I went back at Christmas, but I probably won't be back till next Christmas now. Uh, it all just depends on everything happens because my visa was up in November, but all the visas have got um, extensions because of this coronavirus. So oh, that's handy. I mean, not as often as you'd like to get back, anyways. Sorry. And probably not as often as you'd like to get back. Ah, yeah, sure. It's a it's a long flight, so probably not worthwhile going back every every so often so no um what would, what would be your hopes for your future in rugby would you do you plan on kind of coming back to ireland or would you go anywhere in europe or are you happy to stay kind of down in the southern hemisphere for another way uh hopefully i can come back home soon enough we'll see i'm really enjoying it in new zealand at the moment so i'll um i'll stay here for the next while and see what happens see where it goes and then if anything comes back home, home i'll probably i'll jump at it and well, yeah. have a crack at it again so yeah. At the moment, I'm just just cruising, going from country to country. So. It's dead right. It's the best way to do it. At least you can do it. Exactly. What else would you be at? <laughs> exactly. It's your better weather over there. Yeah, it's summer here now, so it's great. Is that, is, getting, what's how, what's the time. weather like? I don't, I don't have to use the beds like you, James. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say there's just puddles of sweat coming out of you. You were bad in the winter in Ireland. I'd say you're even worse over there. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder you're doing so well because no one wants to tackle you. <laughs> Favorite song, Kona. What, what was it again? Uh, Valerie. I was close one, but uh, you sang uh, "In the Mountain High" on uh, the Highland Instagram. But I, um, I don't really know how it goes. <laughs> oh, you probably better off looking at it on Spotify. I'm sure you can get a, a sing along version there. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to, don't want to sing a lighter too for us. No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Not tonight. <laughs> I'm gonna try and find the video on YouTube and attach it in the comments of this. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, on thank you very much for coming on. Um, oh, no worries, boy. It's probably late enough over there now. <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> Thanks for having me, James. No problem. Uh, we'll send you over a few bits, ten percent off if you if you want. Oh, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Colin.